What's up guys, this is Shandan and today we are in Sungai Long. Behind us will be Forest Green. Very cool place. So today we are here for a couple of reasons. Number one is to showcase Sungai Long as an address because I just find this location very fascinating all the time because if you look into the surroundings, there's a few things that's going on. It's very close to Utah, University Tunggu Abdul Rahman, where, it, where that will produce a lot of student population, right? That will attract a lot of students to actually stay around here. But at the same time, when you have a student target segment, you also have the high-end areas because next to that will be the golf course. So you have all these amazing bungalows located around the golf course and the view is going to be amazing when you're staying up there. And because of that as well, you have a lot of commercial areas that is really a stone throw away. That is so near. And those things are just very, very important to know when you are doing property investment. And a common problem for condos in Malaysia is nobody would want to pay for a car park, especially students, right? Therefore, you will need a lot of space around the entrance for the apartment so people can actually just park here. Lah. And this design suddenly makes sense because at the end, there's no development yet. So there's this no man's land for car parks. So we are now in the facility deck and with the red bricks facade, right? Everything looks very aged, but I see it's charm. And you can see it's a very nice landscape going on within the facility area where you have the pool. But generally, this is where a lot of students choose to stay. That's very nice. Then the second reason why we are here is because when things are reopened, um, a lot of people are handing over keys already. So, a lot of new owners got their keys for the first time. Then you need to go through this thinking process of how or what to do with your unit. And in this episode, hopefully we can cover all of them. Isn't car parks like this so rare to come by already? Where you get to park ground floor, facility deck is at the ground floor. It's just so nice when you have car parks like this. It's really almost that landed kind of feel. What a wonderful feeling to have. In not, now all we all park in basement only. Basement la, elevator car park la, right? Okay, coming up to the unit, right? This is the ground floor and per floor there's eight units. Four units per room. And this is the guys. Uh, finally, we get to see them. Uh, Okay, so now we are in the unit and this is a nice 60 square feet unit a 3 bedroom, 2 bathroom layout So after you get your keys right, the first thing to really figure out would be the tenant profile and the budget that you're going to allocate to the unit itself So the first part which is the target segment really needs to be figured out before the purchase where you need to debate is this a own stay or is this an investment unit right? So for this particular development located in Sumai Long, target audience here will most likely be either university students or fresh graduates or even working adults because this is a very nice mixture of things. Therefore, the finishes in your unit becomes very crucial on who you're targeting. Let's say if you're going to target students, maybe splitting the rooms by renting them out individually, that can be one of the strategies to break even faster or even have positive cash flow on your rental. Or you want to rent out to working adults who can really afford more, have bigger budget on accommodation. After sorting that out, those kind of elements affect the budget as well. So in terms of budget, um, there are three factors. The first one would be the mode of doing, which means it's either you're going to do it yourself, or you're going to be engaging interior designers, or you're going to be engaging new modes, which my team is in the makeover guys, right? So we are in this special new arrangement where it's going to be the more economical way of doing things, but it's entirely up to you, right? So besides that mode of renovation, you need to check also the physical aspect of the unit. Whether are you going to split it by rooms, that's going to add on cost because you're going to have split meters for different tenants or whatsoever. Then you've got to rent out to working adults, Cooking might be a priority to them instead of just renting out to students where basically they can just go out and tap out, right? And the existing condition of the unit. Because it's a common practice for developers, 
in order to cut down the cost, they will give as bad as possible. For example, kitchen cabinets cost around eight to twelve thousand. Wardrobe will cost around six to eight thousand, and that depends on the quality of the hinges, whether it's built in, customized to the specs, or is it just a loose one. So those are the specifications that you really need to take consideration. For example, this kitchen, because the size is rather okay, so you can actually have an L-shaped one indirectly. So if the unit is bare without kitchen, without aircon points, without water heaters, that's going to be the bigger chunk of cost for your renovation. That's why sometimes you really have to debate whether should you take up all these finishes from the developer itself because those can be included in your loan but then you need to pay interest of it. But that is up cash flow. Now you need a lot more capital to do it yourself. Yeah. And coming up from the kitchen, this will be the dining as well as the living space. And here I want to talk about the different level of finishings. So if you are planning to do either bare finish or semi furnish or fully furnish or even designer furnish, right? That will have different outcome of your rental strategy. So there's nothing wrong with doing it bare or semi furnish, but that will only lead to several outcomes. The first one is people will only compare based on price, like you know, opposite thousand two a here one two five zero. Why that extra fifty bucks? Ah, uh, uh, can you just cut down that fifty bucks? But it's very hard to blame them as well because the unit is empty, I need to bring in everything myself. It was only last time I remember people used to have their very own collections of furniture when they move about. But I think in today's trend of tenants, I don't think so unless you're in the luxury segment where they have their signature or their private collection of furniture that, that they bring around when they shift homes. So if you're going to rent out your unit semi furnished or bare furnished, because it only makes sense for people to take up the unit for 2-3 to three years only it makes sense for me to go through all the hassle in furnishing up the unit buy my own bed, buy my own TV, electronics and things like that but this is going to be the path with the least resistance as mentioned by Gavin of the makeover guys right when the building is handed over let's say 1000 units right a lot of people is going to choose to do that <coughs> especially the developer is providing semi furnished unit already so everybody just okay la chin chai la just rent out like that right there's going to be a lot of that kind of products in the market so how do you then stand out? Of course, by moving up your resistance level, which is to choose to furnish up the unit. And just like as you mentioned, it's either you do it yourself via ordering online, and that's a very good way of doing it. You can really leverage on your credit card, on a, on a zero interest 12 month installments that is provided right now in all these different platforms. But that is provided you have the time to coordinate all the deliveries because it was a nightmare for us when we did it. Another thing to take note would be the time to also communicate with the respective specialists. For example, the carpenters for your built-in wardrobes, the carpenters for your kitchen cabinet, the electrician for your fans and lights. And every application you need to run to the management office for approval, for work done, for work to start. A lot of coordination works. And it's okay if the investment property is close to your office or home, but if it's a distance away, right, how many days of leave can you take? just to furnish up a house, right? Then of course, if budget is not an issue, go for an ID designer, especially if you're going for own stay, right? You want to treat yourself, create that space to raise your family, for you to be looking forward every time you come back home, go ahead if budget persists, right? However, there's this economical way where it somewhat came from the investment point of view. We need to make units like this look complete, look furnished, using minimal budget to achieve that maximum impact in terms of rental returns and visual comfort. Yes, this might sound biased because I work there, right? And like, oh, yeah, of course you should for more makeover guys, right? But personally, I furnish like two to three units with them already. And when, when I look at the rates and I compare, if I were to do it DIY, right? Do it myself. It's going to be that difference of cost. And for that difference, I'm actually paying for the design sense and the time that I don't have. If the task is to come up with designs like this, furniture combinations and color matching elements like this in 30 working days, it's going to be very challenging. But if you have that sense, you can always do it yourself, but I don't. Therefore, the value for the extra margin, I'm paying for these kind of services. Plus, there's insurance, lah. There's reliability like, and there's a cool app where you can track the progress now. Very exciting actually. So for older units like this, you can see that the structural elements are kind of thicker, kind of more crude in finishing because that was the way 
houses were built. Lah. Now houses at least was 3 meters. Last time 2.5, 2.8 was okay already. Then in order to camouflage that, they design and integrate that different color schemes to highlight. And suddenly it becomes visually pleasing. That's very nice. So after you decided which mode of renovation you are going to go with, you will now need to make a decision on how detailed you want to go. And this is where we always advise to go for completion of the unit instead of a very nice chair. What I mean is, here you have your queen size bed with your bedside tables and then your bedside lamp, aircon, curtain, loose wardrobe. I will then add on maybe a study table with a chair that can also act as a dressing table. That will add a lot of value to the space instead of all that budget into one huge wardrobe that is built in. So with that same amount of budget, this feels more complete rather than one very nice wardrobe. Then for areas such as the washroom, um, things are pretty much set, right? How often do you really change the WC or basin, right? But now, slowly the trend has moved into water heaters being part of the essential services. And that falls under the category of electrical appliances as well where it includes aircon, washing machine, TV. Of course, this depends on the budget that you have. So the debate here is with that same amount of budget, go for completion instead of perfecting one element or one furniture or the T-Lam is branded, you sleep really like, oh, no point one. So by providing a fully furnished unit, um, it just adds dimension, it just diversifies your target audience because now people will take it for a short term stay for one year or six months. You can even do it for Airbnb purposes because this can entirely run for a short term stay kind of thing and comparing that to a bare furnish. Another element to look at now is also because of the trend of rental tenancies. Now, it's pretty standard that you have only one year tenancies. You're lucky if you have two, if you're an investor, right? But generally, one year is also not a bad thing. And with such trends, the element of luck of getting a tenant should be ignored already because a lot of first time property investors, right? Oh, wow, my bare furnish are also ran out 1003. Your one fully furnished ran out 1004. Ha 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 ha. But when the market starts correcting itself throughout the years, every year your unit will be placed up into the marketplace again to look for the next tenant again and again and again. So that is where the fully furnished value comes in. Your unit looking so perfect every time, looking so nice on pictures every time, it's just easier and faster to get the tenants you want. Instead of hoping for another person who blur blur or who are just in urgent matters that he really or she really needs a space immediately. Therefore, they are willing to pay the rates that you ask for. If not every time you put out your unit for rent, right, you just gonna pray, please, please, next tenant come, next tenant come, right? Ultimately, this may sound a lot just to consider a unit for rental or for own stay, right? There's just a lot of elements and every decision made will really affect the entire cost structure or the budget will just explode like, because, wow, I like this chair, right? So it's, you gotta be really disciplined in coming up with a table to aim for completeness or you can just get somebody like the makeover guys, right? So this episode is brought to you by the makeover guys along with their 10 10 promotion. So for every orders made during this month, you get a free upgrade on your wardrobe or your curtains or whatsoever. I'll just put the link down below. You guys can go find out more. Also, if cash flow is a problem, you can always choose to leverage on your credit card where there's this zero interest installment plans that, that the company is ready to provide. So that's cool. Because the debate has always been to spend maybe around 20, 30,000 for extra three to 400 in terms of return every month. Does it make sense and when can I break even 300, 30,000, wow. But what people don't see really is every 400 ringgit extra in your rental returns, that results in a 100,000 in capital appreciation for your unit. That might sound like a mouthful, but every time when you choose to invest in a particular property, we all look at ROI, right? So there's a difference between 3% ROI and 4% ROI. What does that 1% mean? It means 400 ringgit extra in terms of rental returns. So suddenly when a unit is 3.1% in returns versus a 
4.1% in returns. The 4.1% one will stand out more. Also, if I were to remain the rates, I can sell at a higher price for the same unit. So there's this statement that has been circulating between the property experts, right? Getting the right unit is only half the equation. After you get the unit, right, what to do with the unit is the other half of the equation for a proper property investment. So in this other half, there's generally a few things to look at, the budget, the time, and the returns, right? So how do you pick the method of doing your renovation and how would it affect all these elements? And that would be the criteria of consideration for you moving forward. But if it's an own stay unit, generally it's the budget first, then who is going to do it, lah, right? So it's a bit more direct in that way. But for rental purposes, from the investment point of view, you really got to consider all that to really maximize on the time you don't have, the design sense you don't have, and the budget that is really scarce right now. Also do take into consideration the speed to market the faster your unit is out to the market the faster it will be rented out and every month without fail the bank will be asking money from you unless you apply for moratorium lah. so if you apply for moratorium also that becomes a good thing as well because that six months moratorium that you saved up indirectly that would be the fund that is sufficient for you to complete fully furnish your unit and the last thing to point out after fully furnishing your unit, one of the benefits is to also boost up your DSR, which is your debt service ratio. Let's say the installment is 1002, if I were to rent out bare, it's 900. But if I were to rent out fully furnished, it's 1004. So 1004, 80% of it can somewhat cover the installment entirely, and that will greatly improve my DSR in the eye of the bank. And that will enable me to invest on the next property, right? As I can get more financing from the bank. That's a very important point to also take note if you are planning to invest more, right? And I guess that's all for this episode this is one of the examples that the team has made it really changed the perspective suddenly from a very old apartment right when you come in it feels fresh it feels nice and with a rental of thousand eight per month not bad ma. and that's all for this episode thank you very much and do check out the 1010 promotion from the makeover guys if you have just gotten your keys right if not just get the quotation or then compare later also can uh, right and with that thank you very much for watching if you really like this episode like it share it and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is Sean Tan ciao